What is good? We're back with our guy, Mike, at Dynasty Zoltan F. Zoltan. Another fresh pop. Um, <laughs> if you missed the last video, we discussed some free agents with our guy up here, our new friend. Where, where can we find all your works before we get into uh, picks versus players here? Yeah, for sure. So just search Dynasty Zoltan on Twitter, Patreon. Uh, I also just released a podcast first episode yesterday. So check all that out. Uh, hit me up. I, I love interacting with all y'all. Yeah, we appreciate you joining us, man. Uh, let's get into some yeah. 23 rookie picks versus players and whatnot. So, you know, we're going to try to have a little bit of fun, wrap this show up with, you know, put the fun back in fantasy. But everyone's so damn serious yeah. all the time, you know? Um, it's very serious. All right, we got, I kind of got this broken up into some running backs, some wide receivers, some tight ends, and some quarterbacks. Um, let's start with the running backs, and let's see how high up the flagpole we can run Kenneth Walker. I don't know where you stand on him. We're big Kenny fans. Um, Me too. Would you go super flex tight end premium is how we're going to be judging all of these picks. Cool. Um, would you go into that quarterback pool, into like the 1-4 area with Kenny Walker? It's tough. It's so hard because you look at what happened to Jonathan Taylor last season, and, and that's kind of the the comp I would love to see for Kenneth Walker's upside. He had a running back one season. He moved up to you know middle of the first round in dynasty drafts, and he had one semi down year, and now he's like a late second, basically going in the same place as Kenneth Walker. While there's you know twelve or thirteen quarterbacks going ahead of him, so yeah. I don't think I could move him to the one hundred four range just because the upside of a guy like Richardson, Young, or Stroud, given the state of the QB position after the top fifteen or so, is so terrible. I would take one hundred four over him, but it would it would be painful because yeah. I do love Walker. I think that's my sentiments exactly. What you said there at the end with the with the shape of and the and the way that. We just don't. There's like six quarterbacks that we think we really know and we really like, and then there's another group that we're like okay with, but then yeah. we're 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 just pressing to try to find some of the next group of guys that can take us there with some upside. So I, I agree with you. I think you got to stay outside. I think 105 though. I think I'm in. I am in at 105 as well. That's that's exactly. We're in the exact same spot. Um, I wouldn't say it's easy. I can see why you would want a guy like Gibbs or Najigba over him, but I have Walker in my film rankings, you know, literally 0.1 over Jameer Gibbs, and we've seen him do it in the NFL. He's in a pretty decent spot, so I'm, I'm taking Walker there. Proved he could catch the football in the NFL, exactly. and obviously could tote the fucking rock, and that translated right to the NFL. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm there with you one five. Cause then, you know, you've, you've got, you've got the two top quarterbacks or well, the top three quarterbacks, those are gone. And Bijan is time to take some Kenneth Walker. Cause he's definitely going above all the rest of those guys in startups. startups. Yeah. Uh, let's see yeah. where Kenneth Walker is here on our ADP. Uh, one thing that I would say about trading him for the one Oh five is my preference or sorry, trading the one Oh five for Kenneth Walker. My preference would be to wait until the draft. Cause we're all assuming that those three quarterbacks are going to come off, but you never know. I, right. I get a lot of questions from my patrons. You know, I have three quarterbacks. Should I take JSN at the one Oh two, you know, right. There's nah. going to be someone in some drafts. Yeah, of course the answer is no, but yeah. there's going to be someone who does it. So if you can, I would wait until the draft to make that move because you might luck into a guy like Richardson. Yeah, that's a, that's a good tidbit. We, we, we started we started saying stop taking the best player available, we'll take the best asset available, and the best yeah. asset, like we just talked about, is one of those quarterbacks. So I, I, would, I would agree that's a good a good call. But for yeah, the we, purpose of our game, yeah, we'll, uh, yes, yes. In our in our ADP, which uh, we just got it put together, we've been doing drafts this off season, and I had a, a a buddy of mine write some code to be able to just take all of our sleeper drafts and enter it into the program, and it spits out ADP for us. So there's a lot of different places you can get ADP, but this is like from like there's usually at least three of us in it, and then we get other dynasty people in and then our patrons are mostly doing it it's one of the perks of being over on uh, patreon.com slash the ff dynasty little plug there kenneth walker's at 32 uh stroud's at 30 and then you got to go down to 44 where jackson smith and jigba comes into play and yeah gibbs man is gibbs after all these guys let me find he's if he's down at 51 so um and this is just four drafts yeah and that'll now. all as soon as the draft happens it's all, all they're all creeping up go. yeah 
uh, yeah, even but, further. A- absolutely. I, I, that's funny. You mentioned that I actually do a similar thing. I have a, uh, you know, uh, computer, a uh, computer science background. So I do a similar thing with the sleeper API. It's, it's great that you can access all these drafts. I, I have Kenneth Walker, uh, in my ADP at a very similar spot at, uh, at 29, um, yeah. just behind the one Oh three. So, uh, but you know, some of these are from before the combine when Anthony Richardson really solidified himself. So right. it right. seems like that's about where he's going. A point I want to make from just hearing all this conversation is that, you know, we're talking about these rookies going up. You got to hold your rookie picks right now. You know, you got to hold them. Oh, yeah. They're just getting more and more valuable. People are like, who should I take with this pick? Or should I trade this pick? Or should I do just sit tight? I don't know who exactly to tell you who to take. It's probably going to be Anthony Richardson by the time we get to the draft. <laughs> that motherfucker's going to be the 101. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, I, we're st- I'm still going to be stick with Bijan, but 102, you want to take Anthony Richardson? Go. Um, but all these players' value are just going to keep creeping up. So hold your rookie picks. Sit tight. I know you can't wait. You, you got to do something. You're antsy. I, and, and probably most of y'all have 24, 23 first. So, you know, there's nothing, you know, my, you probably should trade some of them at this point. But uh, just just sit tight with your, with, if you got two or three first round picks, just sit tight. Just let this thing play out. Have a little patience and that's going to reward you. All right. Who, who, what's next? All right. Let's go. Let's go to Swift next because we just talked about David Montgomery in the other show. Um, I don't Swift. Know, what's Swift's ADP right there? And then what are your, is Swift. If you could get a first for Swift right now, would you take the first? Any first? So we're talking like startup hasn't started yet. Someone's offering me a 24 first. Let's say I know it's for Swift. You know, yeah. completely random. Yeah. Sure. I, I am. It's painful, but I'm taking Swift there because, you know, the disproportionate upside of that first could end up being Caleb Williams, Drake May, a guy like that. Um, in terms of twenty three, would you go? Would you go one? That's where it's tough. One nine, one Wait, ten. Wait, so you were saying you'd take the twenty four first, or you'd rather have Swift? No, he's saying he'd take the twenty. I take the. Okay. I take the, the twenty four first. 24. And it, exactly, and this is after the Montgomery signing. Like that's that's what really impacts it for me because Swift just doesn't have that ceiling now in twenty twenty three, and he's an unrestricted. I mean, I doubt they're going to extend him. He'll be a free agent. Maybe he does better in twenty four, but I think I'm going to take a 24 first in terms of a 23 pick listen my rb3 right now is zach charbonnet assuming he Mm, goes you know in the top 80 picks or so to a halfway decent landing spot i'll be taking him over swift so that's 107 levis at 108 i'll probably take qj or addison over him Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's it's the 110 111 range but before before this signing, I had DeAndre Swift between the 108 and the 109. So after this signing, I'm gonna have to move him down maybe to the to the back end of the first, the 111 range, something like that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much in agreement. Don't have anything much to add to that. I, I feel very similar. Yeah, I like to bring guests on and argue with them about their bad <laughs> take, argue with them about their bad takes. But uh, yeah, I can't. So I, I I have a question for y'all talking sure. about that 111, 112 range. Who is your running back for right now? And, oh. and would you mm. take that guy over Swift? I, I've, I've, we've talked about this with the last like two guests. And then I, we did a Patreon show and I, I, I really don't know. I've got such a log jam from four on where it's yeah. for a while. It seemed to be Evans. It was going to be Evans and, and Tucker. were kind of log jam there. And now it seems like for me, it's expanded even more to, Maybe even throwing Kendra Miller or Chase Brown up in there. Um, a band of Kanda. Yeah. I, I just, I feel like some draft capital needs to help me sort out at least, you know, I like a decent amount of those guys. I just don't know. I, you know. Swift over all those guys? As of right now, I would say yes. Yeah. But there's going to be somebody or or a few guys after the draft that you're like, oh, I like yeah, that. You- I like that guy. I like that situation. The draft capital's decent. Fire them up, you know. I feel like that's the, I've never, you know, waited that long to be in on a guy. I guess, but well, it just seems no. Like that's a big loss. That's jam. well said. Like I don't think Swift right now. I wouldn't take any one of those guys over Swift because you know Zach Evans is my RB four. He could be around five pick, and then I'd feel like an idiot. Right. But I am taking the one ten. Let's say where the RB four is going to go over Swift because, like you said, someone's going to go day two to a good landing spot and the hype is going to be unreal because you know there's there's a great running back depth in this class and all of them can play so it's going to be merited hype for whoever ends up right. getting that draft capital right Love now it. we we had we we were big on evans 
the the I thought he was going to come in at two fifteen. The right. weight the weight scared me a little bit and knocked me off my pedestal. Uh, so I'm if I'm, he'd have come I'm and wavering ran, right now. I'm if wavering. He'd, if he'd have come in at two four and, and murdered the combine, because I do think he has some pretty good speed and and yeah. probably some long speed and the agility is good. And if he'd have come in and and cut weight to put up awesome numbers, which I think is probably what he was trying to do. But then he gets hurt and has, a, I think, a hamstring strain six days before the combine. So then he cut weight, gets hurt. I don't know. Maybe he didn't cut weight. I'm trying to give my man the benefit of the doubt. There's a lot <laughs> no, of haters, I, a lot of negative, a lot of negativity surrounding him about his off-the-field concerns, which may or may not be warranted. I'm trying to cut my man some slack. And, and I don't know about you, but if I pulled my hamstring right now, six days from now, I could yeah. easily weigh 10 pounds more than I do, you know, <laughs> yeah. not moving a lot, pound a few McRibs and, and I'll be all set. <laughs> but yeah, it, it seems like Evans missed, uh, missed that memo. All right. Well, let's, I had a couple more. Cool- how, how much weight can you put on in six days? That's a good TikTok. I can't put, on, like, I can't challenge. put on a lot, yeah. but I mean, I know this. Uh, plenty of people can. I just oh, don't, yeah. I could put on two, three pounds maybe, but that's just cause I'm built like a. A, ass like a 10 year old a boy youth. <laughs> a youth that's a true lies quote of anybody um, for the older cats out there all right let's get off the running backs here um let's go let's, let's get go, off mothers let's go running back or uh wide receiver yeah you know, i'm looking at quarterbacks i'm saying everything but let's go to quarterbacks <laughs> let's go russell wilson um and let's try to figure out where he's going now they they've been on the move in free agency they signed mcglinchy and powers so they're automatically going in and revamping that line Yep. Um, trying to get that thing a little better. Um, what do you where where are we putting Russell at? Is Russell back into the first round at all for you um, in Superflex tight end premium? It's really close. I think that his market value is there, but I would not take him there. Um, Russell Wilson's that type of guy where again I would just take a Geno Smith for cheaper. I'd take a Derek Carr for cheaper. I think it's a similar ceiling with a similar floor. I I don't see a way that Russell Wilson is a top six quarterback again. He hasn't been running at all in recent seasons, and he's honestly never been a good enough passer to put up you know a Justin Herbert season or even what Tua did for half of last season. So. I would probably have him definitely below, you know, will where Will Levis might go, below where the RB4 that we were talking about might go. I'd probably have him around the 201, 202, where we're talking about. But we can't you know, take Kincaid, you know, what are we going to do? Well, that's the issue. Like, <laughs> I would love to take Kincaid over Russ, but I know Russ has more value, so I wouldn't, sure. you know, wouldn't do that. But, yeah, I, I think he slides in after the Johnston Addison and whoever the RB4 is, I, right around the 112-201 for me. Yeah, I, I would, I'd be, I wouldn't be scared to give you two twos for Russell, but I'd be scared to give you a one for Russell. Um, Absolutely. If, if you can get a 24 first from him, I don't care how good the team looks on paper. I, I would do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. I guess I I get that you know he looking at the ADP from from our off season data he's at sixty six QB he's creeping up right he started off at seventy two overall then sixty seven sixty two creeping up to fifty nine as Last the QB seventeen right wow and so but that's you know Sean Payton brings a lot of love to this whole Denver offense rightfully so and he's not too far removed from you know he. What did he finish as a QB 16, the 22 top overall scoring player in PPR, and it was about as bad as it can get for Russell Wilson? And so I guess the age factors into it because he is 34, but it seems like a young 34. And if he's going to have Drew Brees and Sean Payton figuring this thing out with him in the offseason, I think he's a huge value. Like, I think think it's probably me (laughs) – Taking Russell Wilson with some of these you, drafts. It was you that took him at 5-2 uh, or whatever and, and, that was. And it's so hard to get a quarterback, and it's like, yeah. you know. And he, he is going right around. So he's two picks after Russell Wilson in average ADP. Or sorry, two picks after Will Levis, who's at 64. Jordan Addison is at 61. Quentin Johnston is uh, six picks later at 72. So he's right around, you know, he's in that mid to late first range. And, 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 and I do get it, but the problem with Russ is that last season he had four games over 19 points and he had five games under 10 points. Yeah. That's, it was as bad would, as it can get. You would hope that, you, you would hope that with what 
Sean Payton does and the system that they're going to run that you can mitigate the those low ends and we can yeah. live in the 15s for a bad game and maybe be in the 22s for the good games um, and maybe get a little bit of that mobility back, live and die in that screen game. They just picked up Samaj P. Ryan who can run that pass game pretty well. We don't know what Javante is going to do and we don't know if Judy or Sutton is going to be there, if one of them is going to leave. Yeah. Um, but Sounds they, like they're really trying to move Sutton. The system around the players around him aren't the worst. And if the line's a little better, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily too scared of Russell. I think mostly because of the scarcity of quarterbacks. I think there's a, at least a little bit more upside than maybe some of those some of the Genos. And but I, I get it. I think they're 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 right there. And I don't think it's too big of a gap where I feel the need to really go too hard in the paint trying to get Russell yeah. rather than one of those guys. And and that's the type of situation where in a startup, I don't I don't blame anyone for taking him round five, early round six, because it's really hard to get quarterbacks. But once a league is three years into the league and four of the teams are tanking and a few of the teams have three or four quarterbacks, it'll be a little bit cheaper. And that's when, you know, taking Russ over the 108, 109 probably comes back to bite you. Yeah. All right. Well, how about Tua? Because this, this is a tough one for me. You know, if he's healthy yeah. and everything's good to go and I feel good about it, I would take Tua in the second round all day long. But right now, I'm not touching him. Um, he went. They did pick up his fifth they, year they option did. and they haven't they made did. a play yeah. for. They got Mike White. Uh, it's a good backup. Yeah, great, you need a good backup. backup. Good situation. You do. Mike White. <laughs> um, three seven in this last draft is. Would Tua go in the first round of 23 picks for you? Oh, absolutely. In the first round, yeah, without a doubt. I was thinking whether I'm going to take him at one above 104 or 103 or 102. Oh, nice. So you would. Damn. I mean, you're not scared? I, you're not scared? You're never I'm scared. Not, I'm not particularly scared about the concussions. I mean, okay. there's been obviously a con- it's a concern and the floor is there but we've talked about how the qb position really has no one so after we get past you know fields kyler and watson it's either you take you know to uh trey lance or daniel jones or you're waiting and you know in my opinion reaching a little bit on russell wilson mm-hmm. so in my opinion i would rather take Tua, who's shown that upside who's locked into a coach who seems to really believe in him with two elite wide receivers mm-hmm. i would take Tua there and you know i wouldn't take Tua over the 102 or 103 or probably even the 104 just because i know what the market value is there but over as levis across, all day right yeah. over levis all day i'm 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 taking him over gibbs i'm taking him over jsn so mm. I, I think I think that 104, 105 range, sim- it sounds weird, but similar to Kenneth Walker, I, I think that's where he'll fall in just because of that positional value in, in, a, in a super flex. I like it. Yeah, two is at 28 in our ADP. That's uh, two spots above C.J. Stroud. Yeah. Obviously, Anthony Richardson isn't creeping up here yet. He, I think he made it to right. the end of the he third, was, He maybe? was basically a six-round pick there for a while, and now he, he creeped up in this he last draft four to 4-1. One, one, so, right, in yeah, our last draft you. after the where he broke the combine. I, I can tell you my last draft I did, which was not a mock draft, so a, a, a legit startup, Anthony Richardson went at the 202. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> It's. I'm not saying that's representative or a yeah. decision, but it's man, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen for sure. All right, let's move off the quarterbacks and let's do a couple wide receivers, and we'll get you out of here. Um, I mean, I would say Drake. Drake's got to be after the quarterbacks. Is he? He's the next pick, or are you taking him over some of those quarterbacks? Nope. Spot on. Same same thing as two and Kenneth Walker. I'm, I'm taking him above JSN, although I will say that both in my quantitative grades and my film grades, JSN graded higher than Drake London. Um, when you say quantitative, is that a, like from a metric analytics based grade? Yeah. So I, as I mentioned, I have a background in comp sci. Like I, I do statistics for a living. So I, I, I put together my own metrics. You know, there's a lot of great people who do it. None are really necessarily better than the others, but I found that mine is a pretty high correlation. Uh, quick shout out again. You can get access to my data model on the Patreon, but JSN was the fifth highest receiver I've scouted quantitatively since 2018, and he was fourth in my film grade. So I do see him as that elite, elite level prospect. But that being said, Drake London is 
almost guaranteed to have higher draft capital than him. Drake London showed what he could do last season. Uh, I don't overreact to, you know, basically a product of the offense not throwing a lot. So I'll take London over JSN. But if you're giving me a substantive plus to make that move, I'm happy to take JSN. Which one do you weigh more? Your uh, quantitative Quantitative or my film? film? So it's a bit difficult because my film grade has – it's tough because there's inherent bias in there, right? So when I see my film grade and I see people getting open a lot, that's tracked through the quantitative numbers. So I have the quantitative grade higher. In the past, it's had a higher correlation to success than my film grade is. Uh, you hide your is, nerd. You hide your nerd them well. Thank you. I appreciate. That's why I wore a sports sports jersey, right? <laughs> you know, big sports guy over here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I do favor the quantitative a little bit. Part of that is. I just try to be humble. I, I spend a lot of time watching football and I've taken some online classes for how to scout, but I've never, you know, I don't do this professionally. So I'm going to lend a little credence to the quantitative grades and historically, you know, doing regression analysis, there's a higher correlation there. So regression. I'm, I'm going to stick there. We drink. Yeah. Yeah. Regression. regression drink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, no, what, I, and I say that out of, I'm a nerd as well. I'm a computer engineer. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, so I, I, I also, I feel like hired my nerddom. Well, you but, do. Uh, I wouldn't have guessed it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, man, I haven't put together a quantitative grading scale. I was just like watching the stuff. But that's why we bring on various guests to help us figure this out. Right. We're going to let the other people do the work for us on this, on this <laughs> aspect. Uh, I did not write this program that's giving me the ADP. So would you take Waddle and St. Brown and pretty much I'll put them in that same bucket of just like we just discussed with, with Drake? You're all in the same vein of right around the same spots for picks? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm the highest guy you'll ever meet on St. Brown. He, he's my, I have him above AJ Brown, so he, he's my wide receiver four. Uh, I love Amon Ra. I, I'd put Waddle in that same range too. Uh, the, Waddle's in the same tier for me as London, but I do have Waddle higher. So yeah, yeah basically same, same thing. Um, how about Devonta Smith? Where where does he rank? Does he so stay? Devonta Smith, I found is an awesome sell right now because i love him as a player uh he's actually number three in my film grades uh behind only jamar chase and cd lamb uh again since 2018 so i i absolutely love Devonte smith no shame against him as a player but he is not the best wide receiver on his team and his quarterback loves to run you know it, it's a bit of a myth that the eagles run more than they pass they're actually above average and neutral pass rate but a lot of those turned into hurt scrambles so mm -hmm. Devonte smith as long as goddard and aj brown are there he's the type of guy that doesn't have that 17 to 19 point per game upside which is what i look for at wide receiver so if i can move him for jsn i'm doing it oh what okay. about you guys i'm sticking with Devonta smith yeah it's fair. He's he's so good. I love watching him play. I don't think you're wrong. You're I definitely just, not wrong. You know. He's not the best wide receiver on his team, and you know they're, he's they're, got the rushing quarterback. But he, you know, I'm gonna go back to the film grade, which I don't have a grade. It's a one on the can you fucking be really good at football and yeah. or or zero, which would be not. And he's he's a one, you know. Uh, he's Absolutely. he's phenomenal, and situations can change so drastically in the NFL. It's just like, man, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the talent. I'm gonna take the dude who not, I know. Not that JSN fucking doesn't stud. have the talent at all. No. And there, there could be a landing spot where maybe that flips for me and and capital for JSN, which is probably gonna be there. Um, so it's probably gonna be. I mean, it can't be any better than right. I, I, yeah, right, right, right. Um, so and I mean, both guys like Devonte Smith is just an incredible player. You know, yeah, basically 95th or better percentile in all of the major stats in college and on a per target basis in the pros as well. So it's, it's hard to bet against Devonta Smith. I've just found, I found Devonta Smith. You can get into the top four of the draft, um, not straight up, but similar to how I was saying earlier, DJ Moore, you add on a Pacheco type guy to get to one Oh five. You might be able to do Devonta Smith, but plus Pacheco for the one Oh four. And then the upside of one of those QBs is just massive. So yeah. I typically do move off wide receivers in that range. In our ADP, JSN is 44. Smith is one spot ahead of him at 43. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Two more and then we'll get out of here. Um, Pittman. Where, where, how are we feeling about Pittman? You know, I've never been a Pittman guy. And basically Found everything, I, everything <laughs> I said about Devonta Smith 
I'm going to say about Michael Pittman, except he's not not really as good that, as yeah. good of a football player. So he's capped upside. You know, he's going to have a rookie quarterback most likely. It's not the target competition for him. It's just that he's not the type of player to really manufacture touches all the time where I don't see that, you know, 17 plus point per game ceiling. So to me, he's priced as, you know, the late teens wide receiver. I would love to get a guy like Traylon Burks instead who has more upside than him, or I would like to downgrade to a guy like Deandre Hopkins and pick up, you know, the two Oh one in that deal, get better production, keep the upside, insulate your value a little bit. Um, as far as the first round this year, I'm probably taking QJ Addison over him. Josh Downs is actually my wide receiver too, but, uh, you know, draft Mm. capital will change that. Once I factor draft capital in the model, he moves down to number four. That's about the range. So if you give me the one Oh nine ish for Pittman, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, I would, I tend to agree. I, I would swap flowers for downs for me. Yeah. Um, not as two, but as four. Yeah. Um, and I would I would probably put Flowers and Pittman fairly equally. So that's probably going to be about nine. Um, yeah. But I know right now the Flowers value is, is is a good bit lower in startups, at least of the ones that we've been doing than Pittman. But if, if Flowers goes late one, early two, I think that'll catch up to somewhere around yeah. Pittman. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, according to my ADP, Pittman goes between 107 and 108. Um, that's just way too high. Yeah, it might be even a little higher in this ADP that we yeah. have at 54 overall next to Anthony Richardson and wow. right behind behind Jamar Gibbs or Jameer Gibbs. So I <clears throat> I think that might be Matt Foreman taking Pittman in a lot of those drafts. This He's is, a big yeah. dynasty buy for him, which I do think yeah. the value is down on Pittman, and, and I do think there's probably places where you can get a discount on him. If I could pivot off Pittman and get – the one nine or get the wide receiver three in this draft. I'm doing that for sure. So yeah, we, yeah. we had a guy on the Patreon the other day asking who was trying to move off of Pittman and get, you know, needed depth. He wanted more. He's bad, bad roster needed to get a better roster. And I was like, you know, I don't mind moving off of Pittman, but kind of something similar to you, what you said, I always said, Hey, if you, if you could kind of move in a lateral direction with somebody that views like, like, let's say Deontay Johnson, I don't know how you feel about yeah. Deontay Johnson, but the, the public views down the way we've been drafting his values down. If you could move for Deontay Johnson and a two for Pittman or something, you know, just as an example, I'm not rock solid in there, but just saying moving somebody who I think can score as many or more points than Pittman and get a pick. I think that's, you know, the way to, get out of Pittman if you want to get out of Pittman. Yeah, and that's actually a very good comparison because I have Pittman one spot higher than Deontay Johnson in my rankings. So that's, you know, of course, a trade that I would make. Yeah. Um, all right. And last one, let's go Jerry Judy. Um, we don't we don't exactly know where he, if he's going to stay in Denver or not. This, you know, this could all change. Why do they really want to trade one of those guys? I don't get that sentiment. You it's know? gotta be it's gotta be the contract though, but I, I don't get it either because they got they... Walmart money over there. Like <laughs> what is it? it's contracts are fake. Like the, the, the money's fake. You just you re sign it, give them some guaranteed signing see, uh... bonus and it's not a big deal. They got Walmart money over you, there. You like... ever see the, the comedians in cars with, with Tracy Morgans? He's like Mm-mm. He's like, Jerry's like, are you, are you, are you going to, are you spending all your money? He said, Jerry, I got hit by a Walmart truck, not a Ray Morgan Flanagan truck. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so like money's not a problem and the cap isn't a problem. The cap for good teams I get is, it. is yeah. fake, right? Like it's not, it's not real, right? You just you just move shit around. You re- you just have to have a bunch of upfront money to just dump in it, and they have m- upfront money. Like who knows what they paid Sean Payton? I, I'm sure that's public, but like that's no, how they, they got have, him. They right? don't have to disclose coaches' salaries. So gazillion dollars. They're like whatever you. They sign them a blank check, which yeah. is what they can do. So I just don't understand. And that's why they can't trade Sutton because of the contract. They can, they can figure it out. They just signed with Glinchy, like right, like. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't disagree with you. If I were them, I would keep both. I I did see, and I don't know if y'all are European soccer fans at all, but a big thing that that they do is track airplanes and private flights and try to figure out where agents are flying and stuff. The Patriots team plane was supposedly in Colorado Springs, uh, close to the Denver Broncos facility uh, earlier today. So. May, a Sutton or Judy trade would make a whole lot of sense now that the Pats lost Jacoby Myers. But like like you, I don't know why they would do that. Um, why the Broncos would do that unless they're getting unless they're doing the, you know, 
AJ Brown, Stefan Diggs deal where they're getting a first and can just replace Judy with a guy three years younger, but Judy doesn't have that type of value. I think they'd be looking at, you know, a late second or something like right. that. So I think they'll keep Judy and I, I like him a lot in the Sean Payton offense. I, I think he is one of the more slept on players. I'm pretty high on him in Dynasty. I have him as my wide receiver 17, not including rookies. Uh and actually my wide receiver 18, including rookies. So I have him above all of the wide receivers in this class, uh, other than obviously uh, Smith the Jigba. So I'd probably have him at about the uh, the 108. Yeah, I, I think we did I think we did Judy earlier with John Bauer, and I think I came away no. right around in the same range. Um, I'd take him over probably all the wide receivers not named JSN, and I, I, I'd probably I'd, I'd take Gibbs still. And then Charbonnet could sneak up in there for me uh, right. o- over Judy. Uh, but no, I, I think we're right on right on track there. And, and Judy has the potential to have a Devonta Smith type season and yeah. jump up to the top 40 in startup rankings. And, and that's something that like you can't you can't discount because Judy on a, you know, per game and We've per touch base stretches, lessons. man. And yeah, he was great. He just and. It's talking, referencing again back to my film rankings. I talked about JSN being number three, Jerry Judy's number four of anyone I've scouted since 2018. So I love the player. I think he's got a lot of talent. The Broncos are a volatile situation. If they can put it together, there's going to be a lot of players moving up their rankings there. It feels less volatile. Does it feel less volatile now? I hope. Does Sean Payton well, we're, just we're hoping so. glue all that shit together? Because we've been waiting for the Broncos. Yeah. yeah. To be awesome because they've had offensive pieces, and then when they got Russell Wilson, it was like, oh my god! And then it, <laughs> yeah, the worst season he's ever right. had. So don't d- don't forget the uh, Albert uh, Okwebunam right, hype train right, from last right. year, where he was like Okwebunam. a top eight tight end. Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention, uh, you know, Dulcich is in there. He looked good. You know, I so. love Dulcich. Yeah, um, I mentioned him earlier as yeah. a Waller trade target. Uh, Sean Payton, by the way, eighteen million a year. Mm. Not a Walmart bad job money, if you can baby. get it. Mm-mm. Yeah, not bad. I, well, I, I was I, I lied. I wanted to, I was going to let you go, but it seems like a lot of discourse with Pickens. You seem like you've got a fairly analytical brain. Seems like some of the analytical people are kind of out on Pickens. Let, let me get that your, next gen separation let, stat has really got him <laughs> up a fucking tree. Let me get your view on Pickens and maybe a, a comparison on what you would trade him for. Because I, I, yeah, I, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Yeah, for me, it's it's you know a lot of the stats I look at. Not separation, but, you know, yards per route run, yards per target, things like that, where he's making catches. Um, He's a pretty uh, not versatile route runner. Uh, There's not a whole lot he can do. Uh, And personally, I don't like his attitude. That's not as an analytical guy. That's not a thing that I factor into my grades, but it needs to uh, be factored. He's what I call a fake tough guy, man. At Georgia, I hated it. He would. The, the run would be to the left side. He'd be on the right side, and he'd just go and shove over the cornerback and act like a big tough guy. Like, that's, I don't know, not for me. Anyways. What did uh, that guy say to him, though? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he said some shit, but some you know? shit always gets said. Yeah. Um, I anyways, like I got. Attitude, I guess. I don't uh, know. No, I agree. I, I, don't, I don't like There that. is something off a little. He's a little weird. Yeah. You a know, little bit. That, and, that draft and, day video where he's standing there in front of the TV. <laughs> but, I mean, all these guys are a little weird. Yeah. Especially the wide receivers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I actually I, are you looking I got to get out of Pickens then? If you have absolutely. any, absolutely. He's been one of my number one sells. I've been I found that I've been able to get a twenty four first for him in basically every circumstance. So that's my number one piece of advice that I would do. Basically, anyone I have Pickens at twenty nine in my wide receiver ranks. Everyone in that area from twenty one to thirty one, essentially. So we're talking. Ayuk, Hollywood, Pittman, Deontay, Christian Kirk, George Pickens. If you can get a 24 first for any of those guys, I would absolutely take it because they're not the guys who are going to change the destiny of your team for one way or another. Um, I'm and a, in the I'm same regard. I disagree on Hollywood. I think Hollywood could, if and, you're, if you're and a contender, I, feel like I, think can, I think, yeah, l- less with Ayuk. I think the volume can just be there with Hollywood. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Um, just yeah. in a PPR setting, too. If you're ready to win, I think I think he could be, I, I believe, through six weeks, he was uh, RB4 or five and RB4 or five in targets and yeah. was just absolutely slaying over there. Then he gets hurt. Then Kyler gets hurt. We're going to miss Kyler a little bit in the beginning of the season. Hollywood, I disagree with, but I, I, I hear where your sentiment is going. 
Yeah. And, 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 and in the same regard, I would take, I'd prefer a 24 first because you get that upside, but I'd be happy taking Quentin Johnson, Jordan Addison for me, Josh Downs over him. I'm, I'm pretty out on Pickens. I, I think he's going to be a guy who can put up a thousand yards and, and that's great, but that doesn't do nearly as much for your fantasy team as you might think it does. You know, you can get Jacoby Myers for a third of the price and he's probably going to give you 90% of the production. Right. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> that might have been stretched it a little bit. I mean, for me, the guy is I would I would much rather have a guy like Marquise Brown there. Like you said, I have Marquise Brown a tier higher than Pickens. And I think a lot of a lot of people prefer Pickens to Hollywood. L- looking at my ADP, Pickens goes at the 607 and Hollywood goes at the 707. So that's that's yeah. a move you could look to make as well. Love that Hollywood seventh. Yeah, we got. Let's see, Marquise is at 74 and overall. Judy sometimes in the seventh is, is a beautiful thing as well. Which that's yeah. the seventh round, and Pickens is at 60, so I think that's fifth that's round? The, end yeah, of the that's fifth? a late fifth. Yeah, see, um, if, if if you could move back a round and a half in a startup and get a better player then well see that's a that's a whole nother discussion that's that's uh, that's 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 my bread and butter i love i love the what the why? move back pickup <laughs> yeah. tiered uh and then he led off with that he said right. you know it's more about tears and don't be picky uh, right. that was yeah. a great you know tweet that shit out um <laughs> wh- uh, <laughs> why do you think that george pickens can't I know he ran a lot of go routes, right? Yeah. And that's not because he can't do other routes. He just crushes the go route, right? Or you think he can't do more than that? Why do you think he can't do more? So I love how Pickens targeted, targets the contested cash. That's what stands out for me on his film. But I actually don't think he runs a very good go route. Um, he's fast. He's not elite speed. And I don't like the way that he used. This is why I call him a fake tough guy, because when it actually matters, I don't think he's that physical of a player. What I look for a guy who's going to run a go route is you get that leverage, that vertical leverage up the field, and you're able to cut off the cornerback and really create that separation where even if you're not a guy like Devontae Adams, who, you know, famously ran a uh, four, six is great at this, right? Mm -hmm. He only needs a quarter of a step and then he can turn that into two steps once the ball's there. I didn't find George Pickens was able to do that really at an elite level. And I think he's pretty much that's that's all he can do. He's not a big guy after the catch. He's not a guy who's really fluid in and out of his cuts. To me, I think he's if he was the only guy in an offense, I think he could definitely have a top 20 season. I think he probably will have a top 20 season. But for me, I think a lot of it is valuing the type of season he could put up less where I think his upside is wide receiver. 15 because that's you know he's not versatile enough to do better than that that's just just my opinion yeah how about you it sounds like you're a you're a bigger pickers pickens fan than me yeah i don't know i'm not sure i'm seeing the same thing um sure i thought i think he does have sneaky after the catch ability i think he can win downfield i think that's why they threw it to him so many i think he's like probably lee i don't know i don't have the stat in front of me but i know his percentage of go routes was amongst the league leaders and that's got to be for a reason um, he had he had more targets 20 or more yards down the field than he did between zero and nine yards or 10 to 19 yards that's i, I haven't i haven't done the math i was just looking this up quickly yeah. but there are very few wide receivers he can say that for so you're right i mean they were and maybe that maybe that will improve i mean he got 16 of those 30 deep targets which is an excellent percentage for that so yeah i think maybe he doesn't have a ridiculous separation skills that deep down the field but i I do feel like the hand fighting and the physicality and the ability to contort his body and make these catches it's like they were almost pigeonholing him into that role as a rookie because he could win half the time doing it so i think that you got to account for some room to grow, and the fact that he was such a ridiculous prospect early on in his career. Uh, if he can get it right mentally, that's really the thing with all these guys. And and you not liking the attitude, that's a hundred percent valid concern. Um, so I don't know. I just wanted to follow up with that a little bit. One more question I had uh, <laughs> that, that you said something. This guy's done three pods in a row. He's fucking got a gas. I know. You're I know. Man. I know. <laughs> La- last question. Uh, you mentioned draft capital, and you have this. Um, quantitative grade that you put a players how much does the gra- draft capital weigh in your quantitative grade 
Yeah, that's a good question. Here, I can I can pull up an example. I actually have this up now. So basically, it, I mean, first of all, it varies by position, but in uh, a lot of times, and and how I get this is directly from regression results. So basically, I I set all else equal and try to figure out how draft capital can identify how successful a guy is going to be. So let's take two players, one with really good draft capital and one with really bad draft capital, and I can compare them. So. For instance, um, James Washington, who went 60th, his quanti- he was actually a very good prospect. His quantitative grade was in the 84th percentile pre-draft, and post-draft it was in the 71st percentile. So that's a, that's a pretty big fall. Meanwhile, if we take it a look at a guy whose quantitative grade was lower but went high in the draft – uh, let Terry McLaurin, for well. instance. <laughs> yeah, I like too. the Terry drop. Yeah. <laughs> but Terry, so Terry Terry's a good one. Terry, Terry McLaurin, so he had terrible quantitative numbers. We all know he didn't do anything at Ohio State. He was in the 29th percentile before the draft came out. After the draft, he went all the way up to the 62nd percentile of my rankings. So that's a massive vote of confidence. But you look at the guys around him in quantitative grades, and it's – Colin Johnson, Equinemius St. Brown, Samori Torre, all these guys went in the fifth round. So what I think about is, you know, not only do the numbers prove this out, but the NFL clearly values him way more than the quantitative grades do. So that's why that's a huge factor in there. It boosts him up into a position where he's closer to a guy like, you know, Darnell Mooney as a prospect. And then when I factored my film grades in, he went all the way up to the 78th percentile. So I was pretty high on Terry McLaurin in that draft. And the 78th percentile is closer to, uh, you know, actually Amon Ross St. Brown was in the 76th percentile all in. So that's kind of how I work with the quantitative draft capital and my film grades to try to get a full picture on these players. Yeah, I like it. I, I, we've we've talked to now, you know, we, we I like analytics a little more than him. Um, hey, I'm mo- trying to mo- normalize spreadsheets, baby. That's been my mission all <laughs> off season. I'm gonna normalize spreadsheets for the film people. But we've we've talked to you know you got a little bit more of an analytical brain. The last guy, uh, FB Insights, great follow on yeah. Twitter, great uh, Substack page. Make sure you go check him out. And the episode we just did with him was good. Nick. Um, but both of you guys came in with I, I think the problem with both communities is the staunchness of how they approach each side of it and it doesn't do anybody any good it and, really and shuts you, the other person off you, you were know, very right? good with the way you approached it having both sides of of your own argument and then willing you know to listen and, and he was he kind of had some some different takes very analytical but wasn't too, too concerned with a couple of things that we deem kind of silly that some of the analytical people get hung up on so yeah absolutely it's it's all about a blend and what i love that it does for me personally in my process is I, I don't watch any college football and I don't run any of my data model until I've done my film deep dive on the players. So I'm able nice. to look yeah. at the film, get my own opinion of the players. Since I don't watch college football, I you know, I have a vague idea of, you know, these players, sure, of course. Sure. I'm, I'm in you don't space. Live in a bubble, but yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I'm able to look at, you know, Jordan Addison and Josh Downs. I preferred the tape of Josh Downs by quite a bit. But then I look at the numbers Boo. and Jordan Addison smashes him. Even though Josh Downs is still a 92nd percentile prospect in the numbers, Addison's even better. So yeah. then I go back and I look at the tape again of Addison and I say, where could I have gone wrong? Where did I miss this? Because people don't put up these numbers without being a very good player. So, right, you know, right. it's, it really is just a way to double check myself as I, well. I think that's a perfect way to go. That's yeah. somewhat similar to the way that I go about it, except I don't have my own analytical side of things. I go look at other people's analytical yeah. points of views and uh you know kind of back back check things essentially exactly. of saying hey w- w- how did this look does this match up w- did i miss this is, is this actually a thing is this real can we how can we contextualize these things um so anyway let's get you out of here yeah man um hey really appreciate it man yeah, this, this is been awesome. a ton of fun give us one more read where all your stuff is patreon all that good stuff yeah, for sure. So uh, Dynasty Zoltan FF on Twitter, uh, patreon.com slash Dynasty Zoltan. Uh, find all my ranks, startup ranks, rookie ranks, all the models I've been referring to. Uh, I also have this cool thing called Dynasty Diagnostics, where using some of my computer science background, I run your te- all of your teams and all of your leagues through a system, assign a bunch of values and rankings to them based off history, and essentially give you advice on what to do in all your teams. Um, that's another thing you can access through my Patreon. And then, of course, Dynasty's Old Town Podcast, first episode out yesterday, more to come. Uh, but yeah, that's where you can find me. Nerd! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, no, man, we, we, we very much appreciate it. Be sure oh, to like. This was subscribe. great, man. You yeah. crushed it. Yeah, we it was a lot of fun. You, we got to get you back on again soon. Man, and 100%. Definitely try and get him in this rookie mock, yeah. uh, industry mock that we're going to do uh, probably post NFL draft. Yeah, for sure. But cool. try and hit the ground running with that. Nah, man, can't can't thank you enough for the time. Uh, third pod in the, of the day, couldn't even tell, man. You came in great energy, great great responses, man. I couldn't have uh, enjoyed this more. So really appreciate Thanks, you uh, coming on, man. Appreciate your time. Make sure you go check him out. And uh, you know, if you're listening on the pod, five star review, Spotify, iTunes, preferably, just hit that five stars, baby. And if you're listening on. If you're watching on YouTube at this point, let me get a subscription. <laughs> Hit us in the comment below. Uh, put us put some trade questions in there. I think we're going to start maybe like a email where you can email us your trade scenarios and we'll start grading trades or, or, or going through potential trades for listeners. Right. Um, should be Just hit that subscription button. We'll be uh, coming out with a lot more stuff. We're just grinding and pumping shit out for your pleasure. So... You got anything else? Nah. We'll catch you next time. Appreciate y'all. Peace. Peace. All right, dude.